Anda kembali lagi dalam Tech Conference 2021 dengan tema Future 5G, Global Connectivity, Cloud Computing, and Internet of Things. Dan selanjutnya, Bapak Ibu hadirin sekalian, ladies and gentlemen, kita akan lanjutkan sesi Q&A kita dan masih bersama dengan kami, Dio Tech One, Senior Director dari Huawei Cloud. Oke, okay, Mr. Neo, let's start with our Q&A session. We have received a lot of questions for you regarding the Huawei Cloud, so bear with us. Let me read out the first question. It's from... Uh, Aisha, good afternoon. I would like to ask what are the key advantages of Huawei Cloud compared to Google Cloud, AWS, and also Alibaba Cloud? Okay, so some of the, yeah, this is a common question that people always ask. And uh, you see, first of all, um, our advantage, I believe, is actually the hardware software synergy that we just mentioned, right? As you understand that, um, we have our own, just like I presented, right? Our own AI chipset, you know, architecture-wise, and then we build a cloud platform, and then we build also the ecosystem. So we can ensure end-to-end -end, uh, synergy in terms of uh, performance. You know, uh, this is actually one of the key advantages that we can see. Now, we actually support a lot of customers who are venturing out of China. And uh, of course, our unique value is we know the customer there, right? And correctly, we are also having a very strong local team, you know, to support the, um, the, 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 the customer within the, the country itself. So like, for example, in Malaysia, we actually work with Telecom Malaysia to build a, a Telecom Malaysia, we call it CAE, right? Cloud Alpha H. And that actually help us to support customer who has got local security requirement, right? That uh, they cannot put into the public cloud. So we actually just now mentioned also the Huawei Cloud Stack, which is a private cloud, which is using the same technology as a public cloud. And Huawei Cloud Stack, in fact, if you really look at the functionality, out of 210, we actually have about 50 over services that is already enabled on the private cloud. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive, right? The AI function, uh, the big data function, the user IAS, PaaS, and SaaS, right? Most of these uh, functions are included in there. So those are the kind of features that I can think of, you know. Um, of course, um, we are the latecomers in this uh, game. Uh, our, our key differentiator is really the local present team, you know, to support the customer, right? Thank you. Okay, so let me highlight a little bit. It's strong local team and also comprehensive big data and AI function. Thank you very much, Mr. Neo. And next question, we have a, a question from Panji Umum. Good morning. I would like to ask, is there any challenge and solution provided to avoid data breach in Huawei Cloud Platform? And regarding the 5G technology changes currently taking place from 4G to 5G, are we ready for such changes? Yep. Yes, uh, first let me address the 5G case, right? In fact, uh, 5G is here today, right? If you really look at Shenzhen as a city, uh, the whole city is already 5G enabled. So you can imagine that, you know, like Indonesia, Jakarta, right, you have a 4G network now. You may be building your 5G network um, in phases. Like in Singapore, it's the same thing. But in Shenzhen, the full network is already uh, 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 completed. Um, so, so what happened is this, uh, with, uh, you know, the, the 5G is in fact with a lot of help from Huawei. Uh, we have this Sunjun Intelligent Twins that Huawei is actually working together with about 100 different partners to support the Sunjun government. So today we have integrated many, many applications. Now you have probably heard about the 5G autonomous car, you know, a, 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 a solution that was in the news, right? All this already started in Sunjun. And uh, in fact, the 5G technology is the one that actually made that support. Now in terms of the second question about security breach, now, to highlight one point is uh, Huawei is different from the OTT company. OTT companies may actually monetize, you know, based on the data uh, of the customer. Right? I think this is a well-known fact, you know, especially like the search engine company, you know, when they do business, right, the, 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 the data is the goal, right? So <clears throat> they will leverage on the uh, probably, you know, not specific data, but use the data to create, you know, some values you know to for home monetization now our approach is that for customer data we will not touch it so in terms of security breach you know it's kind of you know zero right we don't have backdoors we don't have anything you know as we you, you can see you know from the news right so that is actually the assurance and just now i presented the security framework you know which is actually very comprehensive covering every areas you know of the security from the physical to the network 
to the applications, to the data, right? And uh, we also highlighted that even if the security still think, you know, the, the customers still think that it's not secure enough, we have partner so solution that we can actually leverage to make it even more secure, right? So this is, this is actually my feedback, you know, for this question. Okay, Mr. Neo, I think about the security and of course the data breach is a major concern for our audience and of course our users. The next question is from Sri Purwaningsi. Huawei owns its own cloud platform. How does Huawei ensure its user security from data breach as there are a lot of hackers and also threats regarding this? Yep. So I also presented just now, we have this security operation center. We do the, you know, um, operation, you know, follow the sun operation. We have three centers that cover the group, right? Now, uh, they actually provide, uh, you know, online monitoring for all these security threats. Security issue, in fact, is not an issue, right? If you can detect and clear the issue early, right? So the, the key is how fast can you detect, you know, the problem and get it resolved, right? So we can see people, uh, company talk about data leaks, right? They only found out the leak only after maybe one week, a month, right? And this is where the issue is. So our objective for having this security operation center is really to help the customer, right? To quickly pinpoint the issues and then address the issue, eradicate out, you know, all the, all the risks, right? Now, uh, from the cloud perspective, when we want to implement security, it comes with two parts, right? One is we want to make sure that the Huawei cloud platform is secure, you know, and then we offer this uh, security services to the customer. Now, the customer must also play their part, you know, when they are in the cloud itself, right? Because once we give the VM to the customer, the customer has got a full, full control of the machines, right? How they want to patch it. If they are not patching it, they are not following the, the right uh, policies, uh, the breach will happen, right? So security is just not one party's job. Right. So when you own the IT system, you know, you just want to make sure that, that the, um, the vendor side, we do, we pay our part. And then for your own, you need to also play your part, you know, to be on guard, you know, at, at all time. Right. So, so, yes, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Neo. Just now you mentioned about the supporting local team that Huawei Cloud has. So does Huawei Cloud has a support team in Indonesia? Yes. Definitely. So we actually have support team all over Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines. And, uh, you know, it is actually a local team. In fact, you see the way how Huawei works is we build the business from carrier where our customer is telco, right? Then we have an enterprise. We actually venture into different vertical industries. And then when the cloud started, we actually take along with all this infrastructure that we have built. So you can see that, you know, when we conduct a business, it's not just cloud team. Our cloud team may be less than 100 people, you know, in Indonesia, but combining the telco team, the carrier team, and the enterprise team, we work as a team to, to engage a customer, right? So it's actually a very strong uh, customer-facing uh, uh, structure, you know, from the from Huawei company as a, as a whole. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay. Neo. And let's move on to the next question. We have a question from Galianto. How is the price calculation scheme if you use the Huawei cloud services? Is it cheaper than any other cloud services? So this uh, question is regarding the price of the uh, Huawei cloud. Well, I would say, you know, uh, Huawei is from China, right? So China product is, uh, you know, you go to Lazada, you go to AliExpress, you know, all the products are so cheap, right? Um, we, we are not really focusing on whether it's uh, cheap or expensive, but I think most important thing is, you know, what is your requirements, you know, and then we will actually have our solution team to work with you to look at what is the most cost effective way, right, in the design, right, so that uh, you optimize in terms of how you utilize the resources, right, and then at the same time, uh, also look at how fast, you know, we can help you to build the application. So the measurements of cost is not so much like, you know, a $1 compared to 120 or 220. It's also the entire way how we actually help you to make it faster and speed up the process. The way you speed up the development, right? Uh, once you speed up the development, then your cost logically will go down. And then if you really look at per VM, per storage cost comparison, uh, obviously, uh, we always have this uh, principle that we want to be 
uh, more competitive in the market, right? So the publish price is one thing, and uh, depending on the project size, if you have a significant large volume, I think obviously we can sit down and talk, right? So those are those are things that you know I want to share here. Thanks. Okay, so another key advantage is, is the price is maybe a, a lot cheaper than the other cloud players. Thank you very much, Mr. Neil. Dan kembali saya ingatkan kepada para pemirsa untuk mengirimkan pertanyaannya ke nomor WhatsApp kami di 0812-1299-0001. Karena 8 orang penanya yang beruntung akan berkesempatan mendapatkan 5 Huawei Band dan juga e-voucher senilai total 3 juta rupiah. Dan selain itu, saya juga ingatkan juga bagi para startup yang ingin mempromosikan brand kalian dalam CNBC Indonesia Tech Conference, bisa mengunjungi laman startup showcase di www.cnbcindonesia.com slash techconference. Karena sesi startup showcase akan memberikan ruang kepada para startup di Indonesia untuk menunjukkan serta mempromosikan brand mereka untuk mendapatkan perhatian dari venture capital atau angel investor. Dan kami akan kembali usai jeda berikut tetaplah bersama kami di Tech Conference 2021.